Ahoy there! Welcome back to another episode of Rule the Waves 2 is Great Britain. After our last few significant victories over the American nation, they are currently on the brink of collapse, so our war there is probably very close to being done. I'm hoping it doesn't finish before we can capture Guantanamo Bay, though, so hopefully we're able to take that territory over. And we'll see where things go from there. Uh, in the meantime, we've won a few minor fights against the Americans in our last episode. And we are looking at where things are going to go in the future. Uh, we have two more large battle cruisers coming out in the next few months. So I'm looking forward to getting those added to the fleet. And our Iron Dukes are still doing stellar service in the Caribbean. And we do still have America blockaded, although how we do, I have no idea, given that uh, we barely outmatch them on the East Coast, and they're still trying to fight us on the Caribbean, too. So who knows? We'll figure that out. For now, I want to take a look at some new ship designs, stuff that I've been thinking about during my downtime between episodes. So let's take a look. I've been trying to think of what would be a good follow-up to the Iron Dukes. And I also want to take advantage of those fancy new 17-inch Quality One guns. So we're going to build something big. Something real big. Alright, so we're looking at something with 12 17-inch Quality One guns. Throw on a little extra ammo there, because why not? I want it to be roughly comparable speed to the Iron Duke, so we want something at 28 knots. I want a 14-inch belt. I want at least a 5-inch deck. Turrets need to be well protected, too. Secondaries don't need much, though. Torpedo Defense 4, since we have that now. Something the Iron Dukes didn't have. Alright, and that is... Oop, there we go. Four inch. All right, and let's see what kind of tonnage we can throw on this thing to make it work. No need for torpedo tubes. Those are just a weak point. And we don't have catapults yet, so clear that off. Throw on a decent number of aircraft, though. All right, and let's start bumping up the tonnage. All right. So at our current limit of 71,000 tons, we're still significantly overweight. But this is the uh, design that I'm looking at. I want that... 12 17 inch guns on there. I want a decent secondary armament and I need very heavy protection because these things are going to be facing off against some pretty impressive stuff. So who knows? We'll see. Uh, we don't quite have the technology yet, but I do know that over the next five years or so we should be getting quite a few weight savings technologies in terms of turrets, armor, engines, hull, all that stuff should be able to bring our tonnage down, as well as getting larger docks to help us build more ship, build bigger ships as well. Ooh, I forgot unit machinery. There we go. Got to have that unit machinery so a single 16-inch shell hit doesn't drop us to a crawl so we can't escape from an enemy fleet. Don't want a repeat of our last Iron Duke loss. So anyway... This is the design that I'm thinking of. We can't quite build it yet. We've got some technologies we need to research. But uh, we're going to work on that. And as soon as we can, this is going to be my next class of ships. I'm probably going to call it the Juggernaut class. So, that looks like a lot of fun. All right, keep an eye on this. We'll see how things change over the next few years and how our tonnage and requirements come down. The other thing that I need to look at is heavy cruisers. So this is another thing that certainly by the late game is going to be much more significant. 
Come on. There we go. That's a more proper looking heavy cruiser. But uh, one of the things that I was looking at was building pocket battleship type vessels. So let's clear that off. We want those 11 inch guns. A, Y, triples. Got to have a decent number of rounds per gun. Well, I would want the ship in the 30 knot range. And let's drop our tonnage down. There we go, 12,000 tons, that's our limit. All right, so it looks like we're a little bit over our tonnage here. So we'll ditch those, we'll put those at four inch. Single dual purpose guns, I do not need that heavy of armor for those. There we go, drop that down. Drop that turret down. Clear off the torpedoes that we don't need. And we could probably build something like this very soon. Uh, so this is another thing that I've been looking at is smaller, cheaper vessels. This is enormously less expensive than the ridiculous battle cruisers I've been building recently. So this may make a uh, good intermediate style ship. Again, we don't quite have the uh, weight savings to build these ships within their requirements. So if I wanted to build it right now, I'd have to go with something much less protected, which I'm not a big fan of. But it is something that we could actually do. Don't normally think of heavy cruisers as having those big guns, but it is a thing that happened, and this game does allow that. But it does have a tonnage limit, so if I were to go up just a little bit, it's no longer allowed to be built. No idea why that's the arbitrary limit of 12,000 tons, but it's there and we're kind of stuck with it. All right, so that's stuff that I'm looking at right now as far as designs. That'll probably be several years out before I even start properly building those. Also got to look into building more carriers. And right now my primary focus is getting more cruisers. We've got five of this Pandora class coming out. So those are pretty good. Probably going to build a few more of those unless more technologies come along, allowing me to build even better cruisers. But yeah, we need some proper, modern, powerful light cruisers to face off against whatever the enemy's got out there. Because our current batch is falling behind, and that's not so great. Alright, uh, we've been going for almost 10 minutes now without actually doing anything significant, so let's move on to our next turn. There we go. Intercepting an American Raider. Auto-resolve that. They escape. Yep, America is on the verge of collapse. So that is not good. Hmm. So our intelligence service is considering offering safe passage to a revolutionary of some renown to his home country of the United States. That'll drive up their uh, unrest level and try and force them to the negotiating table or possibly cause a complete collapse. On the other hand, revolutions tend to be contagious, which is very bad for us. So I'm going to say no. These revolutionaries can be as dangerous to us as the enemy. We'll lock them up and throw away the key. There we go. Oh, interlocked armor plates. Speaking of weight savings in technologies. Actually, wait, that's not a weight savings. That's an improvement of armor quality. 
All right, uh, unexpected advances in submarines. Increased battery capacity, oh, that's useful. Spend more time underwater. Ooh, and here we have improved 12-inch guns. Hmm. Heavy fighting in Guantanamo Bay. Enemy fortifications are still holding up our advance. American AMC has hit a mine. Good riddance. And we are thwarting those raiders. Mm -mm, good stuff. So the enemy is getting some VP from raiders and submarines. But nothing much compared to our blockade. All right. And Germany is rebuilding some of their uh, battleships. Wonder what they're doing. Are they adding on anti-aircraft? Are they adding on advanced fire controls? Who knows? All right. Monthly balance is not looking too great. Let's see, where was that? Uh, Canada is the one that had condenser problems. And the Comus herself in the Med. All right, one more month until the Impenetrable comes out. So that'll free up quite a bit of budget. So that'll be good. All right, next turn, Coastal Raid off the southeastern seaboard. I'm not particularly interested in this. So I'm going to pass on that. Here we go. Cruiser action around Jamaica. That's more the sort of thing that I'm looking for. America declines. Cruiser action off British Columbia. I definitely do not want to do this because I don't have any sort of modern capable cruisers in the area. So I'm definitely going to pass on that. All right, things are not going well for the USA, as we already knew. And there comes the Battlecruiser Impenetrable. All right, the enemy is looking for a negotiated peace. Absolutely not. Let's crush them completely and finish taking that territory. There we go. Fended off that peace deal. Dominating the seas around Nova Scotia. Bermuda? What? Aha! There we go. Our forces have taken control of Guantanamo Bay. All right. Fantastic. Let's take a look at this. Do we have anything in Guantanamo Bay? All right, so Guantanamo Bay has one battery and does have an airfield. Let's see, what kind of airfield does she have? Hmm, not the greatest, but it'll work. All right, we need a aircraft squadron there, so let's Add an air unit, given its proximity to other American holdings. I'm going to go with Torpedo Squadron. So we'll start that going. And now that I've got free budget, we can start looking at our next invasion. Hmm. So I actually want to do that. Which is this worth? Value 2. Puerto Rico, value 5. That one's much more significant. But yeah, ultimately, Haiti is the territory that I'm most interested in, given its proximity for invasions. 
Yeah, I think I'm going to hold off on that, though. This war is almost over. Uh, at this point, we can basically just keep going until the war is over. All right. Uh, we'll just move right along, then. Next turn. Coastal raid off the eastern U.S. Large battle. Um... Hmm. All I've got is my older Dreadnoughts. So, and I don't even have any proper air support. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to pass on that. Fleet battle. Ooh, that's a lot of points there. But, yeah, I got to pass. Intercepts an American Raider, so we'll fight that. It's one of our more modern groups. Ish. All right, well, let's see what we find. Line ahead, squad max. Accelerate to attack speed. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to catch this guy. Oh, hang on. San Diego class heavy cruiser. Oh. That's bad. All right, folks. Run away. We do not want to be messing around with that. Hang on. Might not have much choice. A uh, seven inch belt. Do I have the capability of harming that at all? Let's see. Six inch quality zeros. Yeah, only if I get extremely close. Oh boy. And since this is a Raider intercept. There's nothing of any usefulness around. All right, time to run. Yep, closing right on in. And then they randomly decide to run away. Sounds good to me. So we've taken a few hits, we've been slowed down. Oh, salt water in the reserve feed tanks. Ugh, that's annoying. Don't know why it's always a complete machinery disabling though. Because it is recoverable. All you gotta do is switch to an undamaged feed tank and then blow all the bad seawater contaminated stuff over off hull. Once it's gone, you're good to go again. Back to full power. And it doesn't take that long to do. So why they stay limited to 13 knots, I have no idea. But it looks like this fight is just about done. That raider could have pushed home and taken out two of my cruisers, but I guess they decided not to. All right, let's end the scenario there. Let's see if we did anything to them. Anything at all? Disable the turret. But yeah, we weren't able to go through anything there. No damage. No significant damage. We just made them waste ammo. Alrighty, new docks completed. Oh! Well, that's one of those useful things. More efficient hull form reduces engine horsepower requirements. 
Unexpected advances in light forces and torpedo warfare. Double gun mounts on a destroyer. Huh. Well, that's nice. I'm still going to stick with my guns, though, on destroyer design. We're not quite ready for another design yet. Not only do I need double gun mounts, I need dual-purpose main guns for destroyers, and I need twin guns for dual purpose. Once I've got that, then it's time for our next destroyer class. But until then, we're going to stick with what we've currently got. Focus on cruiser construction. All right, we've unlocked airship bomb armament. And the Indomitable has been damaged. She'll be in dockyard hands for two months. Oh, man. All right, time to reshuffle things around. Let's see what we got here. So it looks like America has withdrawn from the Caribbean. So we can swap around our major forces. All right, so we can take these guys and that, and we'll move all of them down to the Caribbean. So moving capital ship forces down, and then we can take all of our other ships. There we go, grab those guys, and we'll move them up to North American East Coast. Lay down the hammer on those guys. Alright, and we also need to move some other ships around. Uh, not too worried about the ones on trade protection, but... What are you guys doing on active fleet? All right, we do need to move my carriers up. So we'll move those to North American East Coast. There we go. We still have our seaplane tenders. Doing all sorts of wonderful things. And destroyer-wise, all right, what do we want for my destroyers? So we have a bunch of red poles, 900 tonners around on the North American East Coast, and we have a group of lances. Hmm. All right, we're just going to take all of these red poles. We'll move those down south. Bump them along to the Caribbean, and we'll take the Gurkhas, our finest and most experienced group of destroyers, and we'll move those up to the east coast as well. There we go, get some proper firepower up there. Lances are fantastic ships, but they don't have quite the same level of experience that the Gurkhas do. So I think America might be trying for one last big push. They have momentarily broken the blockade. We'll see how long that actually lasts, given that I'm moving probably 200 points worth of ships north. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. All right, on to our next turn. Battlecruiser Invincible intercepts U.S. Raider in the Caribbean. I will auto-resolve that. They escape. We have commissioned some submarines. Yay, free up more money. Enemy fleets dominate the seas around Trinidad. Enemy submarine has sunk our corvette. Destroyer staunch, sunk by a mine. And lots of thwarting. And there we go, blockade reestablished. Huh. Looks like they just moved all their ships down to the Caribbean. Well, 
Well, that's not so great. We still have plenty enough force down there, so I'm not hugely concerned about an invasion. Uh, we'll see. We shall see. One more turn till the Indivisible comes out. Meanwhile, the Impenetrable is already up to fair crew quality, so it's time for her to move overseas. So we'll move her along to the East Coast. We'll see if the American fleet heads back to the East Coast to try and break the blockade. There we go, battleship engagement. Large fight, sounds good to me, I accept. America declines, lots of discontent due to the reestablishment of blockade, hooray. Ooh, and our cruiser Sirius is easily surpassing her design speed, fantastic. Alrighty, the Westland Company has developed an improved model of the Westland Walrus Torpedo Bomber. Alrighty, let's see. Westland Walrus B. Faster speed, longer range. I approve. Yes. American destroyer Patterson has hit a mine. Good riddance. Oh, they're starting to get a decent number of submarines out there. Well, that has gone up quite a bit. They're up to 22 submarines. That's not so good. Alrighty, let's see how well our new cruiser is doing. Oh, come on. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Ah, 31 knots. Glorious. Well then, let's get some more of them. Uh, quick review, the Pandora. Oh man, these are such good looking ships. Eight six inch guns, eight four inch dual purpose. A little bit light on the uh, dual purpose firepower, but still pretty solid. She's got torpedoes, she's got mines, she's got excellent fire control. Oh, these are some nice, nice ships. Yeah, we need more of them. Alrighty, time to build more. So, monthly balance can support ordering a lot of these, so I think I'm going to order. Yeah, we're going to build six of these ships. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to build a whole lot of these ships. Okay, how have they responded? They did indeed retreat. So I've still got some forces down in the Caribbean, but it looks like they did move most of their forces back to the East Coast. Good. All right. And the Indivisible herself, still working up. Seems okay to me. All right. Moving right along. Coastal Raid, large fight. This will probably involve some significant capital ships. I accept. Oh, and America accepted as well. All right, priority for land-based air. Uh, let's see if we can attack enemy ships... Eh, let's just attack enemy ships in general. Our objective is to sink ships. And they tend to have transports and other stuff operating close to our waters. Hmm. What fantastic timing. Our raid begins just as the sun sets. So of course we'll bring both aircraft carriers. All right, let's see what other forces we've got. We have the uh, Iron Dukes. We have a line of uh, battle cruisers. That looks good. We have a decent number of escorts along, so that's good. These should be fairly well screened. Now let's see what this other group over here is. 
Uh, we have Iron Duke, Rodney, and a Battle Cruiser. A little bit weird of a mix there, but sure, why not? We'll see what we can find. So our goal is just to sink two ships. We'll see what we can get. I do want to keep the carriers around and hopefully we'll have some good luck in getting into a proper scrap when the sun comes up. Alright, no sign of anything yet. Once we get close to the coast we will turn towards Portland. Aha, uh -huh, and we have some ships sighted. And that does not look like a lone transport. So let's start getting our way over there. Accelerate to attack speed. And our screening destroyers are really not in position. What are you guys up to? Screen, AI controlled, looks good. Well, it's night, so now is the perfect time for, the, for a flotilla attack. Okay, so they are heading towards us. So we are going to turn hard to starboard and get away. Let's get the uh, battleship line towards us too. Carriers, I want you heading into the corner here so you don't get into any trouble. Hmm. I would not expect that to be a heavy cruiser. It's possible because America does have heavy cruisers. And hopefully we can get out of this without taking too much damage. There we go, getting more 16 inch gun hits on her. Ah, oh, goodness, that wasn't a heavy cruiser, that was a destroyer. I got hammered by at least 10 16-inch shells. I think she's lost. All right, let's reduce speed to 20 knots so we can reform the uh, screen. Withdraw the flotilla attack order. Oh, no, they are launching torpedoes. Reinitiate the flotilla attack order. Oh, we got stuff to the north, too. Great. Okay. Carriers head south. Um, let's try and maintain at least some sort of contact here. There we go, getting some 16 inch close, point blank 16 inch hits on that battle cruiser. One, two, three, some six inch and uh, four inch hits as well. All right, so that's good. And we do have torpedoes out in the north. If I had to guess, I'd say destroyer, but who knows? Ooh, enemy unsighted is hit by a torpedo. Well, this is certainly going to be a decisive action somehow or another. We are definitely causing losses. All right. I do want to turn around to pursue. And hopefully those disorders can keep us well screened. And there's another hit on whatever that is. I'm hoping for capital ship. I'm betting destroyer. Or transport. We'll see. Uh, 
Ooh, and that might be a torpedo hit on a capital ship. That very well may be a proper hit on a significant ship. All right, looks like the Scylla has sighted something. What are you up to, Scylla? Oh, I guess she's had some communication issues since I cannot order her. But at least she's doing her job. She is attacking that destroyer. Good enough for me. All right, and there looks to be the victim of our torpedo. Nope, that's not our victim of our torpedo. It's moving. There's the victim of our torpedo. All right, we're gonna turn to the left, hard a port. And oh, there is the enemy's major forces. So let's go see if we can meet up. Ooh, Pegasus, what are you getting hit by? Yeah, that's some heavy guns. Pegasus is in trouble. Rudder jammed, propulsion damage. Pegasus is probably going to get lost in the night fight. Yep, there she goes. All right, we're taking you off and we're sending you at squad max in front. Accelerate to flank speed. Enemy Corvette hit by a torpedo. That's not a Corvette, that's a destroyer. And how are you guys doing? Okay, we'll take that down to normal speed since I know we are going to have contact with the enemy. Yep, Pegasus is still getting hammered. And there we go, we have the enemy in sight. Alright, battleships break off, destroyers, you're going in. Flotilla attack order, here we go. You guys can stay north, and this group of destroyers is leading the way. Break off! Break off! They have destroyers! Well, Pegasus just got hit by a torpedo. Not too worried about it though, she was already sinking. All right, all battleships break off the attack. It's time for our destroyers to do their job. And there we go, destroyers already doing their job. That's one torpedo hit on the North Dakota class. Somewhat older ship. Actually, 1923, huh. Seems a little bit small and underarmed for a 1923 design. All right, and I want these battleships to break off as well. We'll bring them to starboard. And there's a hit on the New Jersey. Ooh, Collingwood just got nailed. How bad is it? Yeah, that's a pretty nasty chunk of flooding right there. All right, Collingwood, reduce speed six knots, break off the attack. All right, Hercules, continue turning around. And battle cruisers, break off. Turn together, get out of there.
There we go. Another torpedo hit on the New Jersey. So that's good. So that's a more appropriate design. Much bigger than the North Dakota. I have no idea why they'd built something so small. Yeah, this is the thing that I want to take down. So we've got two torpedo hits on the New Jersey. And hopefully by turning away, we can get some broadside guns into them at close range. And more importantly, we can not get torpedoed. Since that is my primary concern. Hercules, what are you doing? Hercules, you head north. And Rodney, you turn north as... Yeah, you turn north as well. I don't want you getting torpedoed. They are, in fact, yeah, hard a port. There we go, getting some 16 inch hits on that North Dakota. Pretty sure she's in all manner of trouble. Alrighty. Let's see, one more turn here. Ooh, getting some hits on that San Diego class. So there is a heavy cruiser. Got one, two, three, four. Four 16 inch shell hits on the San Diego. And a fair number of secondary and tertiary hits as well. So she is in all sorts of trouble now. Good. Well, sure, well, I wish you were torpedoing that cruiser instead of that Drayton or whatever, but we'll see. Who knows? All right, Sandfly. Break off this way, fellows. Sandfly, what are you doing? Put you back on AI control so you don't get in too much trouble. All right, Collingwood, how are you doing? All right, speed is in the process of being reduced, so you should be okay. All right, we've got some more unidentified ships over here. Scylla, what on earth are you doing? All right, one more turn. There we go, torpedo on the San Diego. Between those 16 inch shell hits, of which we're stacking on more, and the torpedo hit, I'm pretty sure that heavy cruiser is D-E-D -E -D dead. She is in really bad shape. And we've got some more hits on the North Dakota and the New Jersey. So that's good. I really want to get more hits on that North Dakota, but we've gotten two torpedoes into her. And a fair number of 16 inch shells, so we've done some damage. Hopefully she'll be sunk. And our primary goal of trying to not get torpedoed ourselves seems to be working so far. All right, but we're coming up on the 45 minute mark, so I think we're gonna have to call this episode to a close right here. We'll see where the American fleet runs to after this, but uh, we'll find that out next episode. Until then, I'm Katori87, signing off.